Hi guys, Mikey from Nana Clubhouse here. Hoping you're all keeping safe during this crazy COVID-19 lockdown. I figured you guys might like to have access to some tools to work on music whilst we're all keeping safe in our isolation bubbles. Today, I'm going to show you what chops, drops and sample retriggers are and how to use them to make your loops really pop. Now this is a huge topic, so I just want to make a few things clear from the outset. The techniques of chopping, dropping and re-triggering are just different names for forms of editing with the overall aim of making your song sound cooler. You're going to notice a huge change in your song once you've gone through this process. However, there is no one single template that I can show you for editing that will work for every situation and every loop. The key here is to learn a few basic methods and then play around with your sounds. Um, being playful, making a change and listening back to what you've done and asking yourself after you have made that change, do I actually like that or does it serve the song? Does it work basically? In other words, there are two parts to this creative process. Part one is rearranging what is already there with absolutely no creative constraints. It could be kooky as it doesn't matter. Part two is all about thinking reflectib reflectively about what you've done and cutting back things that don't work. Um, the trick is to separate them. So part two, the cutting back, doesn't interfere with part one, the creative part. So if you just stick with it, you'll come up with some gold, even if you don't like most of what you create. Remember, if you do something that you don't like, nobody else has to hear it. You get to decide what the finished song sounds like, so don't let the fear of making a mistake stop you from getting stuck in and trying something. So getting back to specifics, um, these techniques uh, of chopping, dropping, and sample re-triggering come from the world of hip-hop. Um, and these are techniques that I, I just use in, you know, it's not like a, a, a universal thing. My personal understanding is that these techniques have emerged to imitate the effects of a hip-hop turntablist and, um, what, what they would use in their DJ sets or when supporting an MC. However, like many aspects of uh, hip-hop culture, these elements are now evident in heaps of other genres now. So don't think this is only relevant if you're making a hip-hop beat. If you're into modern rock or SoundCloud rap, dubstep, funk or pop music, you'll still find these techniques useful. Um, so back in video two, um, I used the metaphor of carving and uh, that the arrangement could be thought of as carved out of a larger block of musical material and really that's basically what we did. Um, well, now we're going to start on the finer detail. Um, so we're going to affect individual loops. We're going to use the split tool um, and the reverse as new take tool as well as cutting and copying to make every moment in the arrangement unique. So let's open up Reaper and get into it. There we go. So, uh, once again, I've opened up two versions of the Looper Man tutorial. Um, I've gone through and completed an edited uh, version with all of the chops, drops, and re-triggers that I, I like to do. And one that is uh, basically untouched uh, since the last video. I'm going to flick between them to demonstrate these techniques to you. So... First of all, um, I just want to play you from the end of the intro uh, on the edited version um, to the middle of the first verse um, to show you how I've put all of these techniques um, into just basically what they sounds what they sound like relative to the original um, arrangement. So here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, okay, I reckon most people would be able to hear that we're not just dealing with identical loops anymore, but something way less predictable. Um, something that's more musical, dare I say it, uh, more varied, and therefore, in my opinion anyway, more interesting. So, let's, it's time to talk about the techniques, um, and we'll start with the easy stuff, okay? So, um, let's start with drops. Um, so, I'm going to take you to the second verse now. Uh, here we go. Ugh, dragging across. Um, about halfway through. So, when uh, this other sample comes in. Um, and play right through at, until the hook over here. Okay, so let's have a listen to that. Notice how much tension that those little moments of silence create. They're incredible. Automatically, you've added so much energy by taking something out of the mix. So uh, a drop is when you literally drop something out of the mix for a really short period of time. Um, some people call them cuts for obvious reasons. Um, and it's worth mentioning that where these drops occur is really important too. Um, in this example, that the, they're at the end of phrases, um, and that's usually where singers or rappers will place the punchline or rhyme of their phrase. Um, with no music in the mix for that split second, the punchline or rhyme will really pop out, and they, it can be heard really clearly. Um, so as a general rule, drops are really effective at the end of sections and, and at the beginning of sections. Um, so if I zoom out, well, we should be able to see uh, that I've I've got them at the beginning and ends of, of all of the verses as a matter of course, really. So, we go, there's one over, there's one over here, uh, verse over there, and there's a couple at the end there. Um, and obviously that one right at the start too, where's verse 1, yeah, so verse 1, so how to do them, well, actually they're really simple, um, so I'll switch back to the unedited, unedited version of the arrangement and I'll show you, so let's start at the end of the intro here, um, this is, in my mind, the obvious point to apply our first drop, um, and it's where the drums come in, um, and the, the riser is swelling down here. We don't really want to cut our riser or sub hit, so I'm just going to select the bells and the ambient loop here um, by right-clicking and dragging, and you've got that selection um, lasso that comes up, and then they go they both uh, turn white. That, that means you know that they're selected. Um, so I'm going to make sure I'm zoomed in so I can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, and I'll probably just try maybe the last beat. Um, so I just like literally click on it with, oops, uh, sorry, click up the top. Um, and that places the playhead. And once it's there, I can press S. And that will divide that selection. It'll actually literally cut those uh, two up um, into two parts. So it's just a matter of selecting the parts that I want to delete, which they're already selected. But if they weren't, I could just uh, right click and drag and that would be selected again. Um, and then pressing delete on the keyboard and they're gone. Um, Obviously, if you are performing a drop on just one part, you only need to select the, that part. Um, and yeah, so let's have a listen and see what that sounds like. <laughs> Uh, 
okay, we could probably be a little bit more um, brutal with that cut. So I'm going to pull it back to maybe the start of... Yeah, let's try that. Nice. Notice how it lets the riser and the downlifter really breathe. Um, so you notice then that I did something when I realized that I hadn't quite... Um, I hadn't quite put the start of the, the drop in the right place. Um, it was, you know, second nature for me, but I'm just going to break down what I did there so you know what, how to do that as well. Because um, you're going to have that same experience, right? It's literally you just select the thing um, that you want to uh, move, and then you go to the right-hand side of the wave, um, and you'll notice, um, yeah, and you want to take it to the right-hand side of the loop, sorry. and um, when that cursor turns into a um, little bracket with an arrow in it, that means that you're in in the in the zone to be able to move the edge of it. Um, and if you've got both of those things selected, um, they'll both move together, and everything will stay locked and in sync. Um, by the way, that idea will work on the other side too. So if you wanted to bring things forward that way, you can do that. Um, so let's go back to the edited version because um, I want to show you a cool way of using drops um, specifically. Yeah, it's the, to do with your drums. Um, so we'll go to start of verse 3, I think it is. Yep. Uh, okay, here we are. And I'll actually I'll just go take it back to the last bar of the um, hook. <laughs> Cool. Um, so you can hear and see that I've pretty much cut out most of the drum beat, right? It's just the snare and the kick popping off the back of the snare. Um, it sounds quite counterintuitive, but you can really add a lot of tension and excitement just by cutting things out. Um, so let's go back to the unedited version and I'll show you how to do some basic drum groove manipulation. Um, now, before we get too far down that road um, and do any cuts, we've got to deal with a tiny bit of theory before we move on. Um, so, drum grooves can exist on a continuum between straight and swung, and they can be anywhere in between those points, okay? So, you might be asking, well, what does that mean? Well, a straight groove is, is all even subdivisions, which sounds like... So it's the just that straight. Whereas a swung groove has a skip note to it, so um, more like. So I'm a I'm a rubbish beatboxer, but that's the that's the 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 idea behind it. So swung has a skip note to it, whereas um, straight is just all even. Um, and how this affects us is if you're working with a swung beat like I am, we're just going to have to make a couple of small adjustments to Reaper's settings so we can edit the drum pattern and keep the same sense of swing that the original loop has. So if you're working with something that's uh, straight, you, you can ignore this bit. Well, you might, no, actually don't ignore it because you'll come up against the swung beat uh, eventually. Um, but yeah, just know that it doesn't apply to your beat. Um, so this setting that we're talking about um, is accessed up the top here. Um, if you mouse over this horseshoe shaped um, icon and right click, oh, it's opened up up here. Actually, I'm just gonna take that back to where it was originally. Because I already had to play around with this earlier on. Um, uh, yeah, so 
this is the um, box that I want you to be looking at, and it's labelled Snap Grid Settings. Um, and it's it allows you to change all the quantization settings for Reaper. And that might sound a bit like gobbledygook to you right now, <laughs> but I'll uh, demonstrate, and I'm sure it will make sense what you, a little bit more once um, you can literally see it, what it what it does um, and what the settings can change so um, I better make sure that I'm zoomed in on something uh, so maybe uh, yeah the verse cool and I'm gonna find oops so maybe go to the end of one of these yeah and zoom pretty far in um, so and I want to be on the the last part of the drum pattern because that's where the this the main skip note the most obvious skip note in uh, our swung pattern is. Um, so I'm going to go back to our, that guy there. And you can see how there's these grey lines happening. Um, and I'm just going to change um, this the value in our um, this box here, this drop-down box, to a higher subdivision, to 16th notes. And you can see immediately that it doubles the amount of uh, gray lines so there's heaps of more heaps more gray lines and um, this is kind of like a really good way of understanding subdivisions so if I add if I go to the immediately the higher subdivision so um, 1 to 30 second notes or 1 over 32 it doubles that you know it cuts those lines in half again um, as you double the subdivision fraction, you double the amount of lines in the same space. So the powerful part of this is that once you set this up correctly, all your cuts will snap to this mathematically even grid and be perfectly in time. So I'm looking for a 16th note pattern because that's uh, just how I roll. And I'm going to hit that. And you can see that the uh, drums line up with them except for our skip note. So we're halfway there. Um, because we're dealing with a swung groove with skip notes in the loop, we don't actually want a mathematically even grid. Um, so to in order to achieve this and line it up with our swung groove, I'm going to have to change the settings a little bit further to accommodate this. Um, and it's actually pretty easy. Um, you just need to click where it says swing grid, and that's going to change things. And... What I want you to pay attention to is our beat there and its relationship to that line as I move this. So as I move it, it's just going to creep closer and closer to that sample and should be pretty much on top of it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so I can see its DNA. Oh, not that far. Cool. What have I done? Oh, yeah. No, I was right. Oh, God. Yeah, no, I was right. That's cool. Um, oh, that's why I, oh, I clicked on the wrong box. Duh. All right, let's try that again. So, for those of that, <laughs> for those of you that have made um, just made the same mistake that I just made. The um, T just stands for triplets, and it's actually going to put you in the wrong place. So at the moment, just unless you've got dealing with a triplet groove, which you probably won't be, um, just stick to sixteenth notes or eighth notes, maybe thirty second notes. If you're really, you know, if you've got something crazy busy, um, and I'll try that again. Boom. Sweet. All right, so now we can see that our our little gray line lines up perfectly with that sample. Um, it's worth mentioning that uh, Jay Diller, who is widely regarded as one of the greatest of all hip hop producers, famously avoided using quantization grids, um, which kind of 
really created a really unique groove on his records. Uh, check it out if you have a chance. He's a special case though. So um, because we're just starting out, I would recommend you use the grud, basically. Um, now, it's worth mentioning again, um, because it's so important, that if I cut something out of the drum line here, out of the drum loop, um, that it will automatically snap to those lines. Um, and because we've set up the swing to be uh, as the as the loopers, like it's already gonna it's gonna feel like uh, the swing feel of the loop. Um, so getting back to what we were doing, uh, demonstrating chops, I'm gonna cut out everything except for um, the snares. Which I happen to know, uh, fall on beats two and four. Okay, so so how I'm cutting things is I'm just like literally clicking on just before them and just after them, and pressing S. Okay, so just yes, 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 yes. Yes, so S stands for split, um, and I'm going to keep this little um, skip note as well, we, that's going to come in handy in a second. So now I'm going to just highlight the bits that I don't want and press delete. Super easy. Alright, um, while I'm here I'm going to just change the kick pattern up because kind of did that on that other example. So in that other example I, I kind of had things... Oh! Just one at a time. Guys, jeez! Okay. Uh, let's have a listen and see what we've got. <laughs> So that's starting to change up that drum pattern pretty big time. Um, let's drag that same kick pattern, or that same kick sample, sorry, uh, into a few more bars and see what we can do. So I'm just going to grab that and maybe put that there, and maybe one there, and uh, one there, mm, about there. There. Uh, let's have a listen. Yeah, man. So you can hear that that's changing up the drum line heaps. And if you just, if you just simply go through your whole song and just do this one thing you'll have made the song bounce way harder and the beat won't sound like a repetitive loop. So I've just used kicks, but you're not limited to moving just the kick samples around either. You can zoom in, grab your hi-hat um, and snare uh, in the same manner and move them around and create um, different drum patterns. Um, try stuff out and remember if it sounds good to you, then it is good. You know, if it sucks, who cares? Just control Z and do something you like better. Um, one last thing I like to do, and you probably saw me do it on the kick drum sample, is uh, to vary the volumes of the samples that I've moved around as well. Uh, it just um, adds another level of customization to what you're doing with the beat. Um, and how you do that is um, is is that volume knob that I got you guys to set up in the very first tutorial and you know like you can just add a little bit or take a little bit away usually with kick samples I, I like to pull them back if I'm doing like um, syncopation stuff because you don't want it to overtake um, but you know you'll you have your own way with it and your own flavor so um, yeah okay so we've talked about drops pretty thoroughly but we we also kind of 
touched on sample retriggers in that last section. Essentially, what we're doing when we reorder the drum pattern is to retrigger the loop in a nonlinear way. So, in other words, the loop doesn't just start at the start and end at the end. You're retriggering all the parts of the loop as the pattern progresses. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's so. Yeah, there is another way of doing retriggering that I'd like to show you next. Um, it works best on stuff that has harmonic content. So, um, for our example, uh, I guess we're mostly looking at the bell pattern um, and the uh, uh, string pattern, I suppose, and the um, or ambient pattern. Yeah those ones there anyway, um, they're, they're all good candidates for it. Um, so let's have a listen to how, how I've done things in the hook um, in the edited version. So let's, let's find ourselves a hook. Here's one. And actually I'll play you, I'll play you the one going into the bridge because I'm particularly proud of that one. Uh, I'll just play you going into it. Cool. You can hear how the phrase kind of stutters, but it's in rhythm, right? Um, so I've re-triggered the, the strings and also applied a drop. So you can actually see them where I've re-triggered them here, those cuts, and there's the drop. Um, so that it syncopates with what the drum beat is doing. Um, so the drums and the strings really work together as a rhythmic idea, as a, as a cohesive uh, thing. I, I kind of, I really like this effect and it's super easy to do. So let's change over to our unedited version and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's find ourselves a hook. Here we go, there's one. I'll just zoom in on the start of it. Um, I'm just going to play the hook strings solid. <laughs> Okay, can you, I was putting my finger up, as, uh, but can you, you can hear where the notes change in the loop, right? So where the, the uh, harmony changes, basically you want to identify those parts um, and re-trigger them by cutting and copying, um, cu cutting and copying those parts. So I'll show you how, um, I'll just take it out of solo, um, and you might with your loop because you'll you'll be you'll be dealing with a different loop um you're gonna have to experiment a little bit and find something just play around with it until you you find something that you're happy with okay um so i'm just gonna play it again and all right so that's where the first change happens so i'm just gonna I, i've identified that and then i'm gonna zoom in and split it just by pressing S like usual. Um, and let's go for a one beat retrigger. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut it and copy it. Oh, sorry, just selected the one thing, not both of them. I always do that. Xavier <laughs> will tell you. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, okay, so now I've got two copies of that. And let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Okay, can you hear, did you hear that? It was kind of like a little stutter. Yeah, so it, it just adds a rhythmic element to something that previously didn't have a rhythmic element. So I'm just going to go through and uh, then identify those other parts that have that. And I'm guessing that's going to be on the half of the bar here and at the start of this one here and, and so on. So... 
Almost, I, I almost put money on it. In fact, I'm so confident about it, I'm just even, I'm just going to do it. Yeah, man. Copy that guy across. Let's have a listen. Yeah. So it's so you're just making cuts, selecting it and pressing S, dragging across, and then copying by selecting it right with a left click and then holding down control. And dragging, just like we have been um, in our other examples. All right, um, and yeah, so that's that's how you re retrigger um, harmonic stuff. Oh, missed that one. So yes, cut it again, drag it over. Now you don't want to do it like constantly like that. You want to just sort of like. But I'm just for the sake of showing you how how to do it. It's um you know I'm just making it really simple. Right, cool. Um, now I know that the bell part in this will respond to this same idea uh, really well. So, um, I'm just going to do the same thing really, pretty much in the same spots too. So. Actually, I'll start at the start at the start. It's always a good place to start at. Boom, and then um, so yes, drag, control, and drag, and then let's have a listen to them, the two of them together. <laughs> Cool. Can you hear how it's a little bit more cohesive when there's more than one thing doing the retriggering? It gets um, more deeper the more you edit it, you know, like when you start changing up your drum patterns um, to fit what you're retriggering as well, then it starts becoming quite magical. Um, yeah, it just starts sounding dope. Um, so obviously there's heaps of different ways of re-triggering things, but as a general rule of thumb, the starts of phrases are quite good um, material for this technique. Um, and also if you trigger something harmonic like we've just have um, with the bells and the and the strings, um, it's yeah like we were, like I was saying just now, it was it's a really good idea to. Um, marry that up with with something that's purely rhythmic as well. So you've got the harmonic and the rhythmic working together, um, and when you've got those two things working together, it'll, it'll form a cohesive whole that sort of uh, yeah, it just really pops and it'll just make everything sound dope. So there's heaps to explore with retriggering, but I'll leave you guys to do that. And it's one of those art forms like basically every art form whereas you know you learn the basics and then you go out and pretty much teach yourself um so I've, I've shown you the basics and what i want you to do is go out and experiment with it and find out what sucks and find out what is good you know um yeah um i've only really sort of scratched the surface of it with you guys but um it's probably time to move on uh, and check out the next technique uh, which is all about rhythmic chopping between loops aka the chop so um let's go to something that i've already uh done in the edited version um uh, maybe start of verse one i think verse one yep cool so let's play that and kind of see what's going on here should be pretty obvious. Right. Now I think about the chop as being a crossfader on a DJ's mixing desk, right? 
So you can chop rhythmically between ideas like a DJ would if they were performing like a, a beat juggle, for instance. Again, this is a super simple technique to actually do, but it sounds great when you get it right. Um, so you can literally see what I'm doing. I'm chopping between that sound and those two sounds, and then there's nothing there. And that's So that's a chop followed by a drop. And yeah, I think it sounds dope when you do that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, let's head back to our unedited version and I'm going to show you how to do it. So uh, we'll just grab a this verse 2 for instance, because we haven't messed with that one yet. Um, so let's do the same idea kind of thing. Um, we're going to select at least two, but we're going to go with three. Um, so we've got three things selected. Uh, and so like usual, we're selecting by right click and dragging. We've got that box, our selection box, and we're going to pick up all three things. Make sure it goes white. Um, and we're going to cut... Uh, how do I want to do this? Um, maybe I'm going to cut on every beat. So I'm going to um, take the cursor up the top of the timeline and place the playhead and press S. And I'm just going to keep pressing S every beat. Oops. Um, and I'll do that for a couple of bars. We might not use the whole couple of bars, but it's, you know, it's good to have it there. Um, now, so this is where, I mean, this is like super simple. Um, you literally just alternate deleting. So selecting, right click and drag, deleting that one, deleting that one, deleting that one, deleting that one. Uh, what am I going to do? Yeah, delete that one and then for this last one I'll do that same idea so we'll select them all and then we'll actually I'll put the drop there yeah and then maybe yeah so it's just one little thing there let's see what that sounds like <laughs> Cool. All right. Yeah. All right. So that sta that stands up. So that's the essence of doing a chop right there. You're really just cutting between things. And when you get like more, you know, you, you can do things like that same idea. Like, um, yeah. Okay. I'll do it in this bar. But the next one you might for instance, double up the frequency that you make the cuts at, right? So you might chop there and there. So like, you've got your chops there. Oops. And then cut there, cut there, cut there. Um, oh yeah, I'll make a cut there. That might, this might suck, but let's find out. Right, okay, so that was pretty cool. Um, so you can like speed up the frequency, like increase the subdivision as you get further towards uh, a point. And yeah, that's how you can make your chops sort of build up in intensity. Now, before we move on, I just want to show you one last chopping trick, and I've only used it once in the edited version, so I'll take you there and let you have a listen for yourselves, really. So, I'll go over to the edited version, and uh, where was it? Verse 3. Cool, and you can see it, because it's, yeah, it's kind of it's a bit different from everything else. 
So I'm going to play you from a little bit back and see what you think. Yeah, cool, eh? So, so for this chop, I've done something different. Um, in this ver- in this instance of, uh, I'm chopping between a reversed version of the bells loop and the regular version. So the regular version is up the top here, and the reversed bit is down the bottom here. Um, so. Before I show you how how I did that, I just want to point out that I've lined up the chops with what the drums are doing. Okay, so um, that's kind of a cool tip that I think works a lot a lot of the time. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. So uh, we'll go back to our unedited version, and I'll show you how how that how that works. Okay, so. Uh, we're something that we've already put some drum stuff into. No, uh, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just do it. Verse three. Let's go to verse three. Um, so I'll just quickly um put some some drum like some kick syncopations in. Uh, yep. Yeah, something like that. Um, and then, oh, I don't know. I don't really know what this is going to sound like, but hopefully cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got basically, what's that? A bar. It sounds like this. Now nah, needs more more kicks, more kicks. Um more syncopation. Can't get enough of that stuff. Uh ooh, what's that gonna sound like? <laughs> something that I quite like to do, which is, uh, so, oops, it's kind of build up, yeah, so I'm going to build up the end there with some kicks, um, and, now let's kind of mess around with the bell pattern. Um, okay, so how we're going to do that and put a revert, we're going to f- uh, create a reverse thing and then we're going to chop it up. So um, it's pretty easy to do. Just right click on the loops that you want to change up and select them. Um, and then right click and you want to go down to, uh, where is it? Reverse items is new take and click that and all of a sudden you've got those two things Uh, the top one is our our original version and the bottom one is is our reversed version so um, I'm just going to go through here and you can see here I'll zoom in a bit so you can see a bit better but wherever I've made a cut for the drums I'm going to make a cut on uh, the bell pattern as well okay so there, there, oops, there, actually I'm going to start over this end because it, that's the way it works, there, 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 there. Uh, oops, trigger happy, trigger ha- happy mic, alright, and then over 
here. Similar deal. Split it up. Uh, I have no idea how this is going to sound. It might sound terrible, but I'm betting it. And I'm betting not. Okay. So now we've got um, we split the bell pattern up exactly how we've uh, we've cut the drums. So I'm literally <laughs> just going to work backwards from here and select alternately the bottom and the top. Okay, so it's as simple as that. So bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, and top, bottom, top. Just alternate them. And then so what I'm doing when I'm clicking on them is I'm activating that take. So rep is really cool in that you can have as many takes per track as you want. So it's actually built for like um, recording live bands, but it's really cool for this sort of thing as well when you're cutting stuff up. So let's have a listen to that. And wow, oh, that's interesting. It's kind of a cool pattern. All right, let's have a listen and see if it sounds cool. Cool. So as you can hear, it really changes things up um, heaps, you know. And so if, you've, if you're kind of stuck for ideas and you've used like... Um, your other chop patterns or you've used your drop patterns and you're not too sure what to do like doing some reverse work can really yeah change things up and make it sound pretty out of it um yeah cool so that kind of wraps up this tutorial for today um we've covered heaps of ground today uh, including what chops drops and re-triggers are why you'd want to use them um, how to do them easily in your project um, and yeah I hope you have fun with them you know like it's they're really uh, a cool way of adding some uh, character and personality to your your mix and your arrangement not your mix so much more your arrangement um, and I thought that I would let my edited version play out after I say goodbye so you can just see uh, the chops, the drops, and the re-triggers roll past in um, the screen screen capture as it's playing. And, and you can kind of, if you're interested to see how I did it, then it's all there. Um, yeah, so keep watching if that sounds interesting to you. Remember, you'll develop your own way of using these tools that works for you. So, you know, don't have to, yeah... Just have a play around and, and you'll you'll come up with some cool stuff. So um, thanks for watching and um, yeah, until next time, I hope you all stay safe and look after each other and um, your, your families. Um, so bye for now. Uh, here we go.